While it's no secret, your piston rings have a tough job to do inside your engine. They have to seal up all of the combustion so that you get maximum power. But today on Unity Motorsports Garage, I'm going to show you how to file these rings so that you get that power instead of a bunch of broken parts. So stay tuned. While it's no secret, cast pistons and hyperutectic pistons are not as strong as forged pistons. But the first thing that people do when they see a piston failure is they blame the piston. When in fact, the majority of those causes is from a ring gap issue. What happens is when you spray a lot of nitrous or have a lot of boost, the temperatures inside the combustion chamber are sharply raised and that gap will actually close and bud up against each other and when that happens something has to give and the piston ring land will break off of the corner of the piston so remember when you see a cast piston that's broken it's not always the piston's fault there can be other line issues that causes it you know while tuning issues play a big part into that as well you know, I have personally seen cast pistons live a long time with nitrous and lots of it. So just keep that in mind. Ring gap is important. So when it comes to doing piston rings, this is an area that you really need to be honest with yourself and your intended purpose. Because every ring manufacturer has a specified gap that they want you to run for different combinations. So if you're going to be doing an NA street strip build, the ring gap requirement is going to be a lot different than say if you're going to try to use a lot of nitrous or a lot of boost. So if you're building an NA engine now and you're planning on running boost or forced induction of any kind or nitrous down the road, now's the time to make sure that you get this gap right. Uh, each ring manufacturer normally supplies a paper that gives their guidelines of what they recommend for ring gap. So you can use that as a guideline, but it's just that, a guideline. If you're building something that's completely out of the box, make sure that you find someone who has experience in doing what you're trying to do so that you know that you get the right ring gap. So let's get started on getting these ring gaps filed for Project Mixed Up Boss. So if this is your very first time building an engine and you've got a set of rings that require you to file them, because if you're doing a stock type engine build, the rings are going to come pre-gapped. But if you're building something a little bit spicier, you're going to have to file your rings. So let's talk about the things that you're going to need in order to do this. You're going to need a ring gap filer such as this right here, which has an abrasive wheel with a crank on it. Um, they make more expensive models of this that has an electric motor it makes the job a lot faster but if you're starting out use something like this because you can remove a lot of material in a short amount of time so you can go way too big you're going to need a set of good feeler gauges something to check your progress with when you check your uh, put the ring in the cylinder bore this is a tool that's not absolutely needed but it is nice to have and what this tool does is when you're checking your ring gaps in the block you use this and it will actually make sure that the ring is square in the cylinder if you don't have this you can use your piston just put a ring on the second uh, land right there and it will actually square the ring up in the bore as well so you know, these little tools just make things a little bit faster so that you don't have to use your parts that you're using. But I've done it both ways. Last but not least, uh, ignition file set. When you finish grinding your gaps, you need to deburr the actual gap itself to make sure that there's no kind of burr or ridge left in, from the grinding process. This here is something very important. So let's get started on grinding some rings. Now one of the things that I like to do, and it became a habit a long time ago because it was the recommendation of my shop teacher, I always start on the second ring gap, uh, second pack of rings. And the reason for that is, when you're grinding this gap, 
if for some reason you end up going slightly too large, it being on the second ring is not as critical as it would be on the top compression ring. So just something to keep in mind. If you're doing this for the first time, start out on the second ring. That way you get a feel of what you're doing because you want to keep all of these gaps as close to tolerance as you can. Now that we're actually getting ready to start grinding on the ring, make sure that the writing is on top or the dimple is on top to make sure that you're grinding on the top side of the surface. Another important to note part is some people try to squeeze this thing together and grind both halves. And if that's what you want to do, so be it. For my personal experience, I find that it's better to just grind on one edge because you know that that one is perfectly square from the factory. Another thing to note is when you're turning the wheel, make sure that you're turning into the ring itself. And you're gonna grind. And when you first start out, do it only for about 10 seconds or so at a time because you can remove a lot of material in a short amount of time. Once you've done that, wipe the dust off of the ring itself go over to your engine block and check your progress okay so now that we're back here at the block we're going to check the progress we're going to stick the ring in the bore here then we're going to stick our little squaring tool and push down on it to make sure that the ring is square once you have the ring squared in the bore, you would take your feeler gauge and actually check the clearance, just like so. For this engine, I'm going with 26 thousandths because I'm going to be running an NA, but I want to leave the possibility of running nitrous down the road. So it's always rather to be safe and sorry when it comes to ring gap. So once you are finished grinding, now let me remind you, this is going to be a time-consuming process. For a V8 engine, it still takes me a couple of hours to do this and make sure that it's done correctly. But once you're settled on your ring gap, make sure that you take your ignition file, just a flat, small file, and gently break the edge of where you just ground on. The reason why you're doing this is to make sure that the ring can float in the ringland. Because if you have a burr there, it could hang up potentially in your piston and cause all sorts of issues. That should be, go in there and glide just as easy as it can be. So just a little tip for you. Many people might think by going to a slightly larger ring gap that that's going to cost you a lot of power because you're going to get a little bit more blow by. But percentage wise, the amount that you're taking off there is very small. Just remember this. If you get the ring gap right, no one will remember. But if you get it wrong and you scatter parts all over the racetrack, everybody will remember that. So when it comes to dealing with boost or nitrous, getting this right here is one of the most important parts of engine building now for me it's one of the most boring parts because it is so time consuming remember patience is a virtue when it comes to building these engines that you want to make big power so i've got to get my butt in gear and finish these other rings so i'll catch you later next time